Hello friends, in today's video let's see how we can design and manufacture a sculpture by the artist Meminel O.M. Norda in Fusion 360. Please find the link to part 1 of this tutorial in the description of the video below. Now let's move on to manufacturing workspace. So here I am going to set up where we are going to set up our machine coordinates. So by default milling is selected so I am not changing any tabs. So here I am going to select Z axis and X axis. So relatively this should be my Z axis and this should be my X axis. And the starting point or the box point I can select now and that is going to be this point. Go to the next tab, stock. We will use a relative size box which means we don't say the exact measurements of the material we have on the CNC but how much extra material we want to take into consideration for the milling process. Stock side offset we set to 30 mm so that we have enough space for screws on the side of the model without having to worry about the tool cutting into them on the contour cut. Stock top offset we set to 0 because the model we have is the exact same height as the thickness of the material. Stock bottom offset should also be 0. Now we are done creating the setup and we can click OK. This object has been created in oak but it can be created in other materials. All the settings in the manufacture workspace must be adapted to the material we are working in. The following procedure should work fine for most types of wood. The first tool path we want to make is to cut the square holes. The reason why we make this cut before cutting the outline contour is to keep the piece as stable as possible during the milling process. For the square holes, we select 2D pocket from the top menu bar. Let's select the tool first. So on the top you can see here from this icon I can select the tool. So I am selecting flat and mill with these dimensions. So if you have any particular tool for your machine you can give those dimensions over here. We should make sure the part of the bit sticking out of the collet or the tool body is longer than the thickness of the material so that the collet doesn't go into the material while milling. The other settings will be the same. Now I am going to click OK. You can see the tool has appeared in the window. Now let's select the geometry from that tab. Now my geometry is the pocket, rectangular pocket. So I'm going to select the bottom layer because that is the place where the tool has to end. So I'm selecting it either from the top or from the bottom, but the bottom face has to be selected. So now you can see how I have selected all the others. Now let's move on to passes tab. So here I am going to check multiple depths. So under this we can see clearly we have maximum roughness and here I am going to enter these values for finishing step downs and finishing step down. After this you have to uncheck stock to leave. If at all it is checked, please uncheck it. And then you can leave this linking tab as it is. And I am going to click on OK. Right, so now you can see the different tool paths that are generated. So this might take some time if the processing is slow. Then for generating the 2D contour tool path we are selecting 2D, 2D contour and here I am going to select the tool first. So I am going to select the same tool. Then for the geometry I am going to select the outside curve. So here you can see and then I am going to check in tabs. 
then we'll move on to passes and under passes I'm going to check in multiple depths and I'm going to give the same values as given before. And then make sure that stock to leave is unchecked. Then we'll click OK. Simulation helps us to verify toolpaths before running them on a machine. Now I'm going to actions and simulate. Now for the simulation of these two operations, we can see the animation. And here, first of all, it is going to show me the first operation. So here is the play button, which I can use after clicking on stock, because I want to see how the material is going to look before machining. Now when I have selected the play button and it is running the first operation, that is 2D pocket operation. Now if in between if I want to switch, I can click on this button and go to next operation. So it will show the completed first operation and then the 2D contouring tool path. We can get other important information also from this dialog box. First is if you go to info, so here when I am simulating you can dynamically see how the tool path is changing and also which operation of tool is happening like whether it is cutting or whether it is transitioning. So these all you can see dynamically. Then when you move to statistics here you can find the machining time. So both these operations are going to take 3 hours 42 minutes. Post processing converts the generic cutter locations into NC code for a specific CNC machine. From actions, I'm going to select post process. So here is a place where we are going to select the machine. And here you can give the name of the file. And you can see below. I have checked in the open NC file so that I can open the machine code in the WordPad. So after clicking OK, you can see that it is generating the file. Here it is. This code is the only thing that we need to feed to our CNC machine to generate the toolpaths for the sculpture. Let's see how this part is being manufactured on a CNC milling machine. 